Hey, this is John, Happy Wife Fakers. I'm out in the shop again, and today I'm with Vicki. Vicki is an apprentice here on the farm. We are so thrilled to have her. Today we're going to fix a lawnmower. So we're going to do a different twist on a repair video. Vicki is going to do the repairs. <laughs> Vicki, tell us how much experience you have fixing lawnmowers. Zero. Ah. Absolutely none. So I usually tell you, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. But in this case, I'm going to tell Vicki how to do it, and then she's going to do it. It's going to prove to you that whether you know much about lawnmower engines or not, you can do this. Okay, let's get started. Since we know nothing about the mower, uh, Vicky's gonna give it a pull and see if there's any life in it. There is oil, there is gas. I think we know it's not gonna start, so that's a, a good baseline, so we'll go look at it and fix it up. A lawnmower needs these things. It needs compression, it needs a gas-air mixture, and that's done in the carburetor. It needs a spark. Of course, that's going to come out at the spark plug. And you've got to have oil. Uh, oil to lubricate the engine. And also, I want to make this point, a lot of your newer lawnmowers, and this is not one, uh, a lot of newer lawnmowers have an oil gauge sensor. And if the oil falls too low, your mower just won't start. So if you're using it one day and nothing else happened and you go to start it, it won't start, check the oil uh, because you may have one of those sensors and that's the real easy fix. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna kinda go in this order uh, looking at the lawnmower. So one thing about this mower, I know nothing about it. It was dropped off by a customer and he just said, I've had it for a while, haven't used it in a long time. The gas tank was empty. Uh, it just doesn't run. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna act like we know nothing because we don't know anything, and we're just gonna go in order and systematically look at the parts and make sure they work. Okay, first on the list is compression. Here is the boot that goes on your spark plug. There's a spark plug. And that's where the compression builds up. Then a spark ignites it all, and you get power. We're going to check that, although if your mower isn't running and nothing catastrophic has happened, I mean, if it didn't just blow up one day and uh, all kinds of smoke came out, chances are your compression is okay and you don't really need to check this step. It's required to run the engine, but chances are yours is going to be okay. Uh, but we are going to check it and we'll show you how. All right, so Vicki is going to take out the spark plug there we go. Encourage it to come out. She does have a deep socket wrench. And that's going to give us access to put in the compression tester. Um, but no wasted energy here. We, we have to look at the spark plug anyway. Here's our compression tester kit. Uh, these, this will not break the bank. I got this off of eBay. I paid a full $17. We just screw the hose into the spark plug hole, then take the gauge, and you're going to connect that, okay, you push the button to reset it to zero, and then we just pull, pull the starter handle a couple of times and see how this builds up. So we pulled on this a few times, the gauge is just above 50, it's not great, it ought to be at least about 80 on this type of engine. Uh, but I think we can work with it. I'm going to attribute that to the piston and the range just being old and not having too much oil on them. So we're going to proceed and see how this works out. The next step is going to be the gas and air mixture. And Vicky's going to remove the cover. There, that is the air filter. I'm going to look at your air filter. Now this one is a like a sponge type thing. Uh, others are made out of paper. And if they're if they're not too awful, then you can just spray them out with air. So uh, we're just gonna clean that out. This one doesn't look bad. If the foam ones disintegrate in your hands, just go get a new one. But most of the time you can just spray it out and you're good to go. Okay, then we're gonna take this cover off to reveal the carburetor. So let's get that case off. 
so they all come off a little bit different but uh, this one is a couple of nuts that come off a little stuck so you can put a crescent wrench on the handle always want to be gentle with older pieces of equipment because sometimes they don't want to come off they're really stubborn and you wind up breaking pieces this part right here is the carburetor this is the gas line coming into the carburetor and the air comes through here it mixes together down in that throat and then goes into the engine uh, so we're gonna find out where that leak is coming from there's a bowl so we're gonna take this bowl off and just make sure that there's no gunk inside of there because again we don't know the history yours probably looks clean these pliers like surgical pliers are nice to have you don't have to have them uh, but we're just gonna stop the fuel flow by clamping that otherwise you could just take the fuel line off and plug it Vicki is going to loosen that bolt at the bottom that's what's holding the bowl on okay now it's gonna have a lot of drippage come on in chicken it should stop dripping when the when the bowl drains so just a couple of ounces so now wiggle the bowl on the bottom and it should pop loose oh the bowl itself should pop loose. yep there you go That is not a good looking bowl. It's been sitting for a good long time, so probably about what I would expect. So we're gonna clean that up. We're gonna use carburetor cleaner. You can pick this up at Walmart or auto parts store. Be very careful with it. Keep it away from you. And then she's just gonna use a brush to clean it up. Again, chances are yours doesn't have this problem. Uh, it might have a little dirt in there and you just uh, throw it out and put it back together. We're gonna remove the carburetor. There's a gas line, and then there's some linkage. And once that's off, the carburetor's just gonna pull straight out, and there you go. So now that it's off, we can easily inspect it. And one thing you notice right away is this is a gasket, and it's really, really flat. That's what's causing the fuel leakage. So we're just gonna replace that. Uh, with a, a proper size gasket. So we sprayed out the bowl, cleaned that up pretty good. That looks very nice. One other thing we did, we suspected there was probably some gunk up in the jet. And the jet is basically, it's just a hole that goes from here and comes out here. And we've taken a twisty seal, just like you'd seal up your bread, and just strip the end so it's just metal. Now shove that all the way through there you see it coming out so now you know the channel is open and we'll spray that one more time and we'll button this back up put it together we did find a, a spare gasket and so uh, that's that's about all the care and attention the carburetor needs uh, the rest of it is just um, the straight pipes the gas goes up and it comes out the middle here uh, in a spray if you have ever put a straw in a cup of water and then blown on the end and made the spray that's how a carburetor works it creates a vacuum it sucks up the liquid and then turns it into a vapor that's what that's the function of a carburetor uh, but the gas has to be able to get through that tube and get to the top in order for it to work so the carburetor's back together got the linkage on push that back into place there's an outer gasket. Uh, we'll put the fuel line back on. That's just a push. And then use your fingers to pinch the clamp, hold it on. We can now we can take the surgical clamp off. And no leak. So we're good. Um, the other thing we have to address was the primer bulb was pick up the old primer bulb that thing was just hard as a rock wouldn't push so we did get a new one it just goes goes in this little ring and all she does is just shove it in until it 
clicks into place. Now it is time to test the spark. And again, if everything is working fine, nothing blew up on you, chances are you're making spark. But this is a spark tester. And they're real cheap. You can get them at auto parts stores. And all you do is you put it in between the boot and the spark plug. So she's just going to snap that to the spark plug, snap that into the boot. We're going to pull the handle. And if that turns orange, then it's making spark. This is hooked up and she has appropriately pulled the, the handle. You got to pull that handle, otherwise it'll kill the spark. And now she's going to pull. Yep. So I can see the orange. Sorry if it didn't come through on the video, but the, it, it glowed orange in here, which means it is making spark all is good. So now we're just going to clean up the spark plug. If you want to test your spark and you don't have one of these, I want to show you an alternate method. So the alternate method is we're going to use a jumper cable and we're going to clip one end to the ground, which is the, the frame of the engine, the other end to the uh, bottom side of the spark plug. And then when we pull, you'll see a spark come across that. And that way you know that the spark plug is doing well and it's making spark. A little jumpy, but I can see the spark. So the spark plug is good. We're going to clean up and regap the spark plug. Uh, manufacturers will tell you to replace your spark plug every year uh, because, well, they make spark plugs and they want you to buy a new one every year. Don't need to do that. We're going to use a bench grinder just to clean it up. Uh, this may seem a bit extreme, but you know, it works. It doesn't, doesn't harm the spark plug. It looks good. Now we're going to use some fine sandpaper and she's just going to go underneath the electrode and just to uh, roughen that up, clean it up just a little bit. And the last thing we need to do is to have the proper gap. And a quick internet search says that this one is supposed to be 45 thousandths. This is a very simple gapping tool. You can get it at Auto Parts Store for, gosh, about a, a dollar and a half. And she's just going to move it around until it gets to 45 thousandths. If it's too small, you can wiggle it, open it up. If it's too big, you can Kind of bang it on a piece of wood and close it up a little bit. So she's got it regapped, and now we're gonna put it back in. So the last part is oil. We just want to make sure there's oil in it, and this oil is very clean. You can see it's you know it's it's like honey color. Uh, so we're not gonna touch that, and it is full. It's above the the hash lines. So we're gonna put that back in. If it was nasty black or low. Uh, you might want to change your oil. There's two ways to do it. Older models on the bottom side, uh, there's a hole and you take it out and the oil drains and then you, you get rid of the oil. On some of the newer models, believe it or not, you drain it through the fill. There is an air filter side and there's an exhaust side. You always tilt the air filter side up. Don't do it the opposite way around because what will happen is oil will wind up getting into the carburetor and bad things happen. Um, so you want to tilt it up and over and just drain it through the fill. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the way the new ones are built. Some of the new ones say you don't even have to change the oil for like the first five years or life. I don't know how they do that, but you know, miracles, miracles occur. Um, so. Uh, that is it. We're ready to go test this thing and make sure it works. I think he's going to hit that prime bulb. It says hit it two or three times. And then we're going to give it a pull. Yeah. Yay! It's smoothing out. It needed to find its, its new home. It hadn't been run for a long time. Uh, Alright. Well, this is... Uh, guy's going to be back in service. So, good job. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> Thanks. What did you think of that? That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, first time and got it working. This one was uh, a little more complex than you will probably have. And in the end, this one just had problems with the carburetor. It hadn't been running so long and it was getting all clogged up. 
So yeah, I've cleaned it out. And it's not that complicated, really. It's got that bowl that needed cleaning. That's usually where the, uh, the junk gets in. That's where it's gonna settle. Uh, and then that tube that runs up, we just clean it out with a, with a twisty seal. Uh, the rest of it, it clean the spark plug and make sure it's got a good gap on it. Uh, keep good gas in it. So uh, they're not all that difficult. No reason to pay 50, 60 bucks to some guy to, to get it running because he's not going to do any more than we did. Um, and probably put, he'll probably put a new air filter in for you. He'll put in a new spark plug and he'll charge you for all that too. So the, the, the $50 job will become an $80 job. So do it yourself. You can do it. She can do it. I can do it. Good job. All right. Uh, fix one yourself. Tell us how it went. And we will see you soon on the homestead. Bye.